Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's uh, Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I've got on a matchroom t shirt because we've got a matchroom fighter on. Uh, we're not saying she's broke ranks because I've known her years, but she's given me the opportunity to do another interview with her. It's the WBO middleweight champion of the world, Miss Savannah Marshall. How are you doing, champ? I'm good, Ross. How are you? All right. Uh, just caught you at right time as you've been driving miles. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. How, how does it feel to be uh, middleweight champion of the world in one of the original seven glamour divisions? <laughs> well, that's what it is. There were seven yeah. months before. Yeah. So there's 18 now, isn't there? But it's obviously one at glamour divisions. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it feels it feels great just to be just to be known as a world champion. It's um, it's, it's amazing. It's like all the hard work's paid off. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, how did you think the fight went? I thought it was. I thought it went great. Great for me. Um, I stuck to the game plan, and I, obviously I was going in there with the win. I went one better and got the, the got the stoppage. Yeah, you did what you had to do. Uh, the main talking point I want to talk to you about is your style. Uh, it's totally different now, isn't it? Yeah, I just I, we were just saying previous how I think that during the summer I did a lot of body sparring with Huey, um, and I, I I just think that's brought me on loads. Um, obviously, because there was only us two in the gym, and it was uh, you know it was when people went. We both, both of us never had dates, so we were just, you know, just, just ticking over in the gym. And I, I honestly think that that's what, you know, brought, brought me on leaps, leaps and bounds. Do you think it's in your muscle memory bank, what you'd done with Yui, and then it, you took it into the fight? Yeah, 100%. And, I mean, because you've seen Yui, you, you know, in the, in the gym training anyway of us, and you can yeah. see how, like, slick and... You know, he's slipping and sliding, and mm. you know, he's, he's, he's hard to hit. Yeah. You know, never, yeah. So I, I think he's rubbed off on me a little bit. I remember Robin Reed sparring him. Do you remember when he, Robin sparring that day? And Robin said, God, he, he's, he moves really well, doesn't he, for a big man, you Yeah, he really does. Six really foot does. Six, moving like that. Obviously, the dad's going to have to take credit for that, isn't he, for the footwork and that. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I've said it before. Peter's a brilliant coach and he's he's definitely got his own style. Definitely. Is he uh, big on footwork as well, Peter? Because everybody said, I know he's big on uh, you doing the fitness because you're all like 20 round fighters, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. I, I remember when I first um when I when I first started, you know, going down and training, he was training me. I remember for like hours upon end, he just used to have me in the mirror. Doing these like little shuffles that he, he, you know, he's got he's like I said, he's got his own style. So he just had me in the mirror going over the same steps constantly for hours upon end, mm. um, and even even now when we're on the pads, you know, he, he still goes through it with me. Yeah, did you feel? Did you think it were totally different to training with Richie Woodall and McCracken and them up at EIS? Yeah, definitely because I think on the on the squad. There's that many coaches there that they all try to teach her the same way, Do you know, because there's that many, maybe they'd love to put their own spin on you, but because there's that many boxes and you, you get passed around, mm. that, you, that if, you know, I think they just try to stick to a quite basic style. But obviously with Peter, there's just Peter in the gym, isn't there? So, do you know, he, um, do you know, just totally... Oh, there's only him who I listen to. Yeah. Uh, do you miss being at the EIS up there? Because you were there years, weren't you? Uh, not really. But, you know, one of my friends says to me that she thinks I'm quite um, in a, uh, in a, institutionalised. Institutionalised, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And she, she says, it's, well, no, it's because of my GV days. Yeah. Like the way, the way I train, my weight. Um, do you know, I, I, I set me week out on a Sunday. You're very regimented, week. aren't you? Yeah, and I think that that is because of, of being there for eight years because it is it is like quite military. Do you know what you remind me of? Do you know Bunny who, who did strength and Oh yeah, yeah. For Peter, 
You remind me of him. You're, he's very regimented, isn't he, Bunny? Yeah, he is. Yeah. But very, he, very strong man, Bunny. What is he, 60? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, he's, he's like a 20-year-old man, isn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, he does, he's into all that core training, isn't he, and stuff like that. Yeah, he is. Did you do a lot with him? You did, didn't you? I bet. Yeah, we did. We, we it was good to be fair because it was different. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was good. Mm. Uh, moving on then. You know, when you were at the EAS, did you mm-hmm. ever see yourself turning pro? No, never. I had no ambition at all to turn pro. I wasn't even didn't even watch it. I never used to, honestly, I just wasn't interested. The The only time I started watching it was when the likes of Cam Smith and Tom Stalker turned over. And it was because I knew them, so I was just interested in how they were getting on. Yeah. But apart from that, never watched never watched it. Never was I never interested in it or anything like that. No? No, no. Because it's a number that, isn't it, up there, isn't it, when you're on your EIS? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you get get everything paid for. Your physio, uh, you get your food paid for, your accommodation, your 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 mileage. You, know, you even get all down to your socks and trainers. They give you the Mercedes as well, don't they? No, they don't give you a car. But don't, you, get, you have to you, earn that. Yeah, uh, you'd have to buy that yourself. Yeah, but you, oh, you claim yeah. your miles back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you then you're getting paid quite well. So everything you get paid is just pocket money because you're getting, you know, you're getting everything else paid for you. So you don't. It's not like you you can splash out on that Mercedes because you're not paying oh, for anything. Did you else. have a Merc up there when you were up there? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah, got, but you not took that many punches, have you? Yeah, I remember now. Um, yeah, what having a brand new Mercedes? <laughs> Yeah, but they didn't pay for that. Yeah, yeah, but it's like a free one, isn't it? When they give you everything else, isn't it? Well, that, that's what that's what I'm saying. You you have that money to you know splash out and and all that, get a nice car because you're not paying for anything else. Yeah, yeah, I suppose mm-hmm. that's it's. Uh, so, do you think that's why a lot of them stay up there? Uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. Anyone who's uh, well, the thing is, I think. If you don't get an Olympic medal, it's probably better you're staying on there because you don't have, you're on a good wage. You don't have to sell tickets. Mm. Like I said, you don't have to you know, shell out for everything. And the only thing that probably puts people off is, you know, it's quite mind-numbing. I mean, you, you do the same training, it's the same coaches, you box the same people, you've got the same tournaments. Mm. So it's not very, like, it's quite... Mind numbing. Yeah, yeah. All right then. What did you think to it when you went to sign with Floyd Mayweather and that? Did you like it out there? Oh, I absolutely loved it, Russ. Did you? Loved it. Yeah, it was probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. I just, I love, I love it. I love Vegas. It was the first time yeah. ever I'd been. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, uh, I used to do my training during the week, and then on the weekend I used to get an Uber to um the Strip. And I'd go and watch Rod Stewart, or I'd go like, think, oh, I'd go and watch an indie on this weekend. Or, Did you? Know, you? Just, yeah, I just used to strip up and down the um, the strip on my own. On your own? Yeah, I used to go and get a uh, go and get myself a fat burger. Honestly, I loved it. A what a fat burger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's strange. Didn't you have any pals out there? Yeah, but not obviously. I don't, it was when I, there were people from the gym because I didn't have a car. So the only time I'd see people was when I was going to the gym. Do you know what I mean? So then to be honest, on the weekend, I was, I was sick of them. So it was like, I, just, I quite enjoy my own company. But um, to, be on, to be honest, towards the end, it was a bit, it started to uh, drain me a bit. I miss my friends and family. Yeah, he trains at an awkward, awkward hour, doesn't he, Floyd Mayweather, doesn't he? Yeah, and to be honest, while I was there, I, like after my debut, I'd never seen him. No. No, I'd never seen him. Um, but yeah, I think he, he, he trains at like early hours in the morning and or last thing at night. So yeah, the gym was, I think the gym's not empty then anyway. And didn't you used to go train with him at that time? No, not at all. To be honest, it was quite weird because the, the Mayweather gym 
I think it's open from about eight o'clock, sorry, nine o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So that's not like really here. I don't train till six. I train on the morning, then we don't train till six o'clock at night. Whereas there, it was like I used to train on the morning, we stood the conditioning, and then before I, I literally used to just get back in the house, have my dinner, and I used to have to go straight to training again before the gym closed. Yeah, that's strange, that, isn't it? Mm. Could have had your dinner stop there with all my with us. <laughs> all I know, I know. Watching, yeah, sparring, yeah. don't they? Did you think that was a bit odd? What I found odd was when I was there, I think it must have been, like, summertime in Vegas, and obviously there was a lot of tourism, and the gym used to be packed because the public can go in and use the bags. So there was times when I couldn't even get on the bags because Joe Bloggs was there. Because they were Hitting. they were charging them, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what that's what I mean. So there was there was times when you know I'd finished sparring our pads and I couldn't even you know hit the bags or go on the speed ball. Jesus. Right, what next for Savannah Marshall then, WBO middleweight champion of the world? Well, it's been like, for me, it's it's been a tough year because yeah. really I've had like three training camps and I've boxed once. So it's I was at the point before that before my fight where my shoulder was starting to hurt, my elbow. So I, I've 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 been through it a little bit, so I'm just having you know, the rest of the year off. Here we's boxing, um, 12th of December. So I've got my fingers crossed that I'm going to be able to go, but I don't think it's likely. Um, and then just get back on it uh, in the new year and, and see if I can get out as soon as possible. Do you think that you, the Clarissa Shields fight's going to happen, Savannah? I'm hopeful it will. Yeah. I think if it's going to happen, it'll be next year. Um, the, o- <laughs> <laughs> the only thing with that is, I think, you know, I eat little things, and I think she might be tempted to move to the UFC. Yeah. Uh, because, and I don't blame her because it's more money, it's more yeah. publicity. So, you know, I couldn't fault her. Um, but I think her ego would stop her. Obviously, you know me having that other belt and me having that win over her. So, yeah, I am really hopeful that it, that it would, um, do you know, that we will meet next year. You had a bit of a face-off at a show, didn't you? Yeah, it was uh, last Christmas, it was. What was the idea with um, that? It was at MTK show. Chantelle was boxing and she was in the UK. I, I, don't, know if, I don't know what she was doing in the UK, but um, we were both there and it was like... Nothing really got said, really. It was who got that together, I Coogan? No, I think Coogan wasn't there. I think it might have been Lee Eaton, I think. <laughs> but it, I, I've I seen said it, it was picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a scary face for you, Savannah. You looked embarrassed. <laughs> oh, I think it was it was just a little bit. I don't think I didn't know she was gonna be there and she didn't know I was gonna be there, so it was a bit like, oh yeah. But um yeah, nothing nothing really got said, but I guess I think more gets said on Twitter these days. Yeah. Uh, if if you do fight, what weight would you think that you and Clarissa would fight at? Uh, I think, well, I know it'll be middle. She She's uh, kicking about at Super Welter, isn't she? And yeah. although I could probably make Super Welter, I don't think I'll be as powerful. So, and she's got the rest of the belt at middle. And like I said, she probably, she uh, I know she'll want, she'll want that WBO back. So it'll be at middle. If she vacates them and fights at light middle, she 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 will uh, look embarrassed, won't she? She'll be embarrassed, won't she? It'll be cringe. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I don't, like I said, I don't I don't think she will. I think her, I think her ego. I think she's got too big of an ego. Mm. And and will you knock her out or beat her on points? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't know. I can't see that far into the future, but it'll be a win. I'll be getting them belts. You never play your hand, do you, Savannah, when you're asked that, do you? No, not at all. It's, it's one of them things you look... It's it's like you said, cringe. Yeah, if it, could, mm. if it don't happen, you'd be embarrassed, wouldn't you, I think, of it? I actually would, and I don't think I'd let myself li- uh, live it down. 
I ask you that every time I see you and you always say, wait and see, don't you? Oh, well, yeah, I think I'll stick by to that one. Yeah, are you still, still going to have your low left if you fight her? <laughs> you uh, I don't know, I might I might have evolved again by then. Hey, it's all stuff that you're adding to your game, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. It's, um, like I said, you just get better and better, don't you? What do you think to the box in the at the weekend? Uh, what coming up? No, the one that's the gone the three women. I thought it was no. I, I thought it was brilliant. The fact that they put it on YouTube, Facebook for. I mean, like grow, like growing up, I never had Sky. I still don't have Sky. Still <laughs> got it. So it's no. So I think for all the young girls and young boys out there, it was their chance to see something that they probably have never seen before. Yeah. And be inspired. So I thought that was a brilliant move, to be fair. Um, but it was good. I thought, I thought Terry boxed well. I yeah. think she put a couple of demons to rest there. And Katie, I think that was the best I've seen. I know her opponent never brought much to the table, but that was the best I've seen, Katie. She never got her out there, though, did she? After all them punches that she took. No, she didn't. But that that, that Spanish girl, she, she's with Pala. She's a she's tough. Uh, she used to box at Super Welter. Yeah. She used to be a Super Welter weight, yeah. You know? Huh? Have you known her years? Yeah, I've known her quite a long time. She used to be Super Welter, and I don't know how on earth she makes lightweight. But uh, to be honest, I, I remember sparring her years ago, and um, it was just after the Olympic Games, and I hadn't trained for months, and I went to Spain on a training camp. And we were sparring, and she half battered me. But we were like laughing, at, yeah, yeah. So, and the way Katie handled her, I just thought, God, what does that say about me? <laughs> but uh, yeah. no, she, she, she actually is a good fighter. I think, I think she kills herself a bit to make lightweight. And you could just see that, she, you know, she couldn't match Katie's speed. She couldn't lay a glove on her, could she? But um, to be honest, fair play. Where well, I think she was just. Just glad. I think she was just grateful to be in there with Katie. But like yeah, I said, she it was showed difficult. her too much respect, didn't she? Yeah, she did. She really did. It belts up for her end. I don't like her like that. <laughs> if, you a, if you took a beat like that off somebody, you wouldn't want to be holding belts up for her like that, would you? What's all that about? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Really, but, uh, really, I didn't know where to put my face when I seen that. <laughs> But she, she's a she, she's a nice girl. She, she's like I said, I think she was just grateful to be there. But that was the best the best I've seen, Katie. Honestly, I thought she I thought she was brilliant. Mm. And also, obviously, Rachel Ball. Um, she she had a good fight. Yeah, it was it was a really good show. Uh, are you a sore loser, Savannah, at, at sports or at, at most things in general that you do? Do you like to win all the time? Yeah. So I've seen yeah, a couple of pictures but... of you where you've been beat in an England team and you had a face <laughs> like thunder. <laughs> well, yeah, well, maybe because I thought I didn't get beat. I think that if 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 I've been beaten, I know I've been beat, then I can accept it. But I think, do you know, when you know yourself, when you when you think you've won, there's no worse. Yeah, yeah. You d- you got a bad one in one at Olympics, didn't you? What, which one was it, 2012? Yeah, 2012. To be honest, I've, I only watched that back for the first time ever in lockdown, the first lockdown. So it took me, what, maybe eight, year, eight, 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 eight years. years to watch that back. And I thought, you know what, I didn't box my best, but no way I got beat there. Mm. I don't I don't think I got beat at all. And um, Do you think they did that because of the other British fighters that they might have said that they had favourable decisions, so they had to even it out? I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you, Russ, but the way I couldn't tell you. But then in 2016, I'd got beat again. And to be honest, I, I, I thought, right, like, do you know what? I did everything I could. I, I got beat there. But then there was uproar of people saying that that I'd got robbed there. And it was only not so long that I come out that a couple of, the, well, something like four of the judges that were judging my 2016 fight had been banned because of corruption, and I thought, well, there you go again. I've been shafted twice <laughs> for, yeah. an Olymp- for, for, for Olympic bronze. But I just think, you know, I'm, ha- I'm happy, and I, I just think I couldn't imagine my life any different, really, but yeah. there you go. <laughs> there's, there's, life, there's much better than uh, Olympic gold medals. 
You've achieved a lot, though, haven't you, for just uh, for, for a quiet girl from Hartlepool, aren't you, really, don't you think? Oh, yeah, just a, a girl who just likes to box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you're very yeah, quiet, yeah. aren't you? I remember, um, I remember, obviously, I was dead close to Nikki. Yeah. And I remember um, in 2012, obviously, Nikki got the gold. Mm. And I'll never forget this. After I got beat in the in the quarterfinals, I remember coming, like, up the M1 with my sister because I literally got beat on the Wednesday. And I come home on the... Oh, I come home on the Wednesday night. So me and my sister were sat in my car, like, driving up the M1. And I remember looking at her and going, thank God that's over. And I thought, like, looking back now, an Olympic home games, and I couldn't wait to leave. That's how, like, awful that whole situation was for me. And I always remember, obviously, after the Olympics, Nikki just became, like, this mega star. Yeah. And I always remember it. You know, everyone was just flinging, they were flinging, like, cars at her, watches. You know, she was, she was just getting all sorts. And I, I remember thinking, oh, I wish, you know, I wish someone would give me a car. You know, I'd, I wish, you know, I would have won and someone would give me a nice Rolex watch. Yeah. But then there was the other side where she was going on, like, Graham Norton doing BBC Comic Relief, and I was thinking, well, I couldn't think nothing worse than doing that. Yeah. You know, that is just, yeah. yeah. That's so not it, co- is it? Yeah. I think it comes, it comes together, and I just, I just was, was never ready for that. Do you think that the reason that you weren't, you, you, you're with, you and you are in that camp with Peter. Do you think the reason you all get on is, and I, I know what the answer is because I've been sat there for hours on end. Do you think it's because you both don't say anything? <laughs> no, you both. <laughs> no, no, really, because yeah. Huey's quite. Once you, once you, once you find a subject that Huey's interested in, Huey's, Huey's quite a little chatterbox. Yeah, but there's not that many, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, Huey, Huey's a really nice lad. And, yeah. Right, even Peter, Peter's got good. Peter's got good banter. He's, yeah. Uh, we 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 do have a laugh, to be honest. I, I can't imagine though you were you and you were going on Graham Norton, and you just sit there and you just <laughs> if you made eye contact with each other because you're like a couple of kids, you'd be falling about all over the place, wouldn't you? That is so <laughs> not you were you and you were Fury, is it? The Graham Norton show, maybe Tyson Fury, yeah, and Nicola Adams, but not your two. No, no, you we is a good talker. So I don't know. You know. You might get these uh well titles, and then we we we'll see. You might be on Graham Norton. Yeah, you you know you never know, do you? you yeah, know, no, might come no. out this shell a bit more. Yeah. But uh, I just want to finish off on uh, Kevin says. Uh, have you picked a name yet for that horse? Because he's he's got them new horses, hasn't he? <laughs> I know, I know. I've told him. I messaged him. I said he has to call it Savannah Blue. Savannah Blow. So you'll have to change it from SYPS to, to Savannah Blow. <laughs> is that what you want? Yeah. That yeah right? that, when he bought that new horse, I'd messaged him and said, oh, uh, I hope you're calling this horse Savannah Blow. And he went, oh, I might just do that. <laughs> He's yeah. selling it, that mucker. Oh, is he? Yeah, I think somebody from Hong Kong's sent somebody over. They have to wait now for a sort of report and this and that. It takes a bit of time to go through, but I think it might be gone, yeah. It's a sprinter, isn't it? A sprinter, but it's only a baby. Well, yeah, he's, 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 done well, he's done well with it, to be fair, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's been other ones where they've been donkeys, you know, and you're throwing money at them, aren't you? But you like a bet, don't you, with horses? Well, <laughs> to be honest, me and a couple of my friends all won money on that mucker. <laughs> I know you were. Yeah, yeah. You fought it to one first time it ran, didn't it? I know, I don't remember. So, I remember. Brilliant. All right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. I just hope you're all right. And next time we'll try and get you with Belte. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, in, Ross. In fact, if you could, have you got a picture of you with Belt? I have, yeah. If you could send me it and we'll stick that up at the thumbnail, eh? I will. Nice Brilliant. one. Well, listen, you take all care. Right. Cheers, Ross. Thanks for coming on. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, that was Savannah Marshall, WBO, World Middleweight, Champion of the World. How's about that then, eh? I can get this match from T-shirt off now. WBO, Champion of the World. Eh? Not bad, eh? 
I've only put that. I've only put that on for a bit of banter, for all you, uh, for all you matchroom FCs, just to show that I have got a bit of class. But one of the seven weight divisions, which is one of world, was the originals. I mean, the middleweight division is the glamour one in it. Out of all the middleweights, the middle, light, middle, or super well, uh, middle, super middle. The middle is the real glamour one in it. I know Frotch was super middle, but I hate to say it, but. I would have rather him been a middleweight champion than a super middle. I just think there's something about the middleweight division going back years to Ray Robinson, Monson, Marvin Agler, Nigel Ben. I just think there's something about the middleweight division. But uh, I'm really pleased for Savannah. Even having an horse named after an ass, Savannah's, Savannah Blue, or what it's Savannah's Blue, I forget now. But, uh, but yeah, so, all right, I've got my kids now for the night and come stopping with the dad so I keep wanting to get in here keep coming to the door looking so peace out keep on trucking keep supporting boxing thanks for tuning in thanks for liking and subscribing and don't forget to follow Savannah on Twitter she never pushes herself or anything like that to, uh, but if you want to follow her she's on Twitter she's a lovely lass uh, down to earth so alright so peace out.